Come up today on Nick's Game & View, Nintendo's E3 2013 performance is now up for my analysis after critiquing Microsoft and Sony. This is Nick's Game & View. Hello everyone and welcome to Nick's Game & View. You are here with your host, Nick McCallens. While leaving behind their tradition of hosting a full-blown yearly press conference, Nintendo made sure to give their fans love with a collection of announcements through Nintendo Direct, focusing on both the Wii U and 3DS. Kicking off Nintendo Direct, Pokemon X and Y for Nintendo's 3DS was shown, announcing the 18th Pokemon-type fairies. Effective against Dragon-type Pokemon, fairies are sure to add a twist to the game and prolong the enduring video game series. Super Mario 3D World was then announced for the Wii U, stylized similar to that of Super Mario 3D Land on the 3DS. Looks like your typical Mario platformer and will certainly be a hit when it launches on Wii U in December of this year. Mario wasn't done as Nintendo then announced Mario Kart 8 featuring anti-gravity allowing gamers to drive upside down as well as the return of gliding from Mario Kart 7 and underwater racing and motorcycles from Mario Kart Wii. Nintendo then transitioned away from Mario with the announcement of Wii Party U featuring over 80 mini games and a board game structure similar to that of Mario Party with Miis rather than characters from Mario. Nintendo then disappointed by announcing the delay of Wii Fit U, but justified the delay by stating they have integrated new ideas and features requiring more development time. Getting back to positive news, Nintendo took note of the many Miiverse users drawing and sharing artwork, inspiring them to create Art Academy, originally a franchise exclusive to DS and 3DS. No release date was given, but Nintendo will release the art tools on their eShop sometime this summer. Nintendo then transitioned to the third party releases, trying to prove that despite the rough sales, third-party publishers are still supporting the platform. Showing Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, Batman Arkham Origins, Deus Ex Human Revolution The Director's Cut, Disney Infinity, Just Dance 2014, Rayman Legends, Scribblenauts Unmasked at DC Comics Adventure, Splinter Cell Blacklist, Watch Dogs, and more, Nintendo wanted to make it clear that they weren't the only ones developing blockbuster releases for the Wii U. Indie Love was also given by Nintendo with the showing of Ballpoint Universe, Cloudberry Kingdom, and Coaster Crazy Deluxe. DuckTales Remastered was also shown along with Capcom's upcoming Dungeons & Dragons Brawler. Mutant Muds from the 3DS is being remade on the Wii U and will feature bonus content and features exclusive to the Wii U. Oddworld New and Tasty announced during Sony's press conference was announced for the Wii U as well as a new unique game by the name of Scram Kitty. A weird game called Spin the Bottle was briefly shown and then the once Xbox Live Arcade exclusive A World of Kathleen was announced for Wii U's eShot. Exciting fans of the Zelda franchise, Nintendo then showed off The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD for the Wii U, set to release this October, and confirmed The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds will launch exclusively on the 3DS in late 2013. Making a big announcement for the upcoming release of The Wonderful 101, Nintendo announced the game will support multiplayer, supporting up to five players. Out of nowhere, Retro Studio announced Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, where the island has been taken over by a group of Vikings. Nintendo then made another huge announcement by announcing Bayonetta 2 as a Wii U exclusive, and the game looks very enticing. Titled just X for now, Monolith Soft, the team behind Xenoblade Chronicles, is delivering an RPG of massive scale filled with science fiction cities populated by monsters. Scheduled to release at some point in 2014, I'm definitely excited to learn more about the release. Nintendo then announced Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and Wii U with the return of all the major characters plus Mega Man. New levels based on Punch-Out, Animal Crossing, and Skyward Sword were also shown, but other than that, details remained somewhat limited. Overall, I rate Nintendo's E3 performance a C, as I feel it did a pretty good job for not having a full-blown press conference. But I would have liked to see a price drop, more blockbuster games, and a better unveiling of Super Smash Bros. Well, that concludes today's episode of Next Game Review, but be sure to follow me on Twitter at Nimbacanlis, and check back throughout the week for more of my E3 2013 coverage.